Hey guys, it's your boy Darius Simmons with two R's. With my cameraman here, you know, about to go check out some scenery in Cleveland, around the Cleveland area. About to go just try to go a little bit of shopping, hopefully I can find some things that I like today. Never been to this mall, so it's gonna be different. But stay tuned to the end of this video because you're about to hear about my experience with playing with the South Korean phenomenal pianist and composer, one of my favorites, Yerma, that I played with at Carnegie Hall in New York City as a freshman, 15 years old. Playing at Carnegie Hall, stay tuned. Hey guys, we finally made it, you know. So it's actually not in Cleveland. It's like 10 minutes out of Cleveland. It's a pretty nice area. We're about to get to it. I'm about to go walk around, see what's happening up in here. But I'm gonna keep you guys tuned about what's happening. Don't forget, it's two hours in my night. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so like we're totally about to enter in here, but I don't know if I can record in here. And yeah, they're looking at me. They are looking, they are looking at me. So here goes, here goes nothing. Wow, you went crazy. That's yeah, you know I'm going crazy. <laughs> Bro, I can't believe they don't even got like a what is it? A guitar center or something with a like a keyboard in. Yeah, this is pretty upsetting. I don't even see a, like a guitar center. So my cameraman thought he was so smart, right? So we come out this mall because eventually, yeah, the cop ran into us, told us we had to leave. He's 18, I'm 17, but you know, they still kick him out. You're not He's even smart. filming me. Oh, no, Why I, are you holding the camera that way? I got to. Listen, anywho, we don't know where we parked at. I'm kind of stuck. Well, not stuck, I'm kind of lost. Parked in the parking lot with this building. I just don't remember which one. And he said he knew where he was going. I'm pretty sure it's just the This is Darius Simmons Live, and he does I not know. know where he's going. I know where we're going. So, the journey continues. I will get you guys updated if we get back to the car. So, hey, clients, you know where we're going now. So, it looked like he making me walk a mile just to get back to a parking spot. Really? Yeah, this is gonna be a great vlog. Yep, forget it. We're officially lost now. No, we're not. The car is. We're right lost. Over we're there. lost. He said that we came out here and we're lost. So, you guys, I hope you guys are just enjoying this footage because we are lost. I don't know where we're going. I've never been here before. He has. So, we're not that's great when you, you've been here and you don't know where you go. Because of our age, we definitely got kicked out the mall. So, now we came out the wrong exit. So, now we gotta go back in here and, um, we're not supposed to be going back in here. So, <laughs> this is gonna be pretty interesting if he sees us, so. Let's do this. Things just did not go as planned as I thought they were gonna go. Um, we had like this special thing planned out that could have potentially happened, but I guess we went just to the wrong place that we thought was the right place, apparently, and it was not that at all. But now since that going to the mall and playing in front of everybody was a complete failure, um, mm. let's get to the part where you guys are probably more interested about it. Well, my experience playing at Carnegie Hall as a freshman was something that I'm never gonna be able to forget because number one, I got a chance to play with my favorite number one pianist and composer. So when you were able to play with like the person that you would listen to the most out of anybody else, that's truly an amazing experience. To be honest, before, before, um, it's, it's kind of a funny story of how all that happened. So the built up of me playing at Cargany Hall all started when a friend of mine took a video of me playing Yerma's original composition, The River Flows in You. He asked me if he could record me and I said, yeah, sure. Not thinking anything of it, it's just something that kind of happened. But I, I remember, I still remember to this day, I got on the elevator at school. I just kept thinking to myself, I'm like, I think I really played, I played it good. Like I thought I really played it good. Now I'm a freshman 
you know, I'm happy that I could play this song. So I'm thinking in my head, yeah, I really played this song good. So then later on that day in the cafeteria, everybody came up to me and was like, your video hit like 1,000 views. You know, at the time, I'm like, whoa. <laughs> I'm like, whoa, like that was really great. Like I was happy with it. I would have been happy if it stayed there, honestly. I mean, I was just happy that everybody was taking interest into what I was doing because when you're passionate about something and you do something, you want somebody to take an interest in that. If that makes any kind of sense what I just said, but we're gonna keep going anyway. I inbox WF and J News and see where they just be interested in coming to come see me. Like I was not expecting like a news interview, but that's what happened. So they did a news interview on me and like a couple of weeks after that, probably it was a couple of weeks after that, his team got hold of it and they see me playing and they were really interested in it. So then they contacted me saying that Yermo wanted to fly me out to New York City to play with him at Carnegie Hall. When I heard that, I thought I was absolutely in a dream. Cause like that was that's my favorite song. It's still my favorite song to this day, honestly. So when I heard him say that he wanted me to come play with him at Carnegie Hall, it was like a unso real moment. Seriously. Cause first of all, it was it's a couple things in that. First of all, I'm gonna go play with Yerma and Second of all, it was my first time ever going to be on a plane. A little bit nervous, too. There is a two R's, it's a little bit nervous. It's a little bit. But honestly, I had no idea what Carnegie Hall was at all. I had to go on Google and look it up. I had no idea. Like, And that's the thing. I was so young at the time. Everybody kept asking me, well, how does it feel to be able to go play at Carnegie Hall? I, I can't explain that, but how does it feel to play with Yerma? I can explain that. That was great. I didn't know anything about Carnegie Hall, but when we got there, it was just, they, they, were, they were actually really nice people. His whole team was really nice, and he was a really nice person, too. He just basically explained to me to start doing my own original compositions, and that's what you see me doing now today. Hopefully, they take me to the top. That's that's what I really that's what I really want to do. I like making beautiful music for all of you guys, just to really feel. Now, I like making music that somebody can feel, because feeling music with no emotion is pointless, in, in my opinion. So, when we arrived at New York City, the first time I seen your was when he was practicing on stage with his celloist. They let me go inside and listen to him play with his celloist. And when I walked in, funny thing was he was actually playing the River Flows music. So you know that was kind of a bonus to get to hear him play that right off the gate. So yeah, I was a little bit happy. Yeah, I was a little bit happy. Another funny thing is, okay, so I'm sitting in the crowd. I'm sitting in the third row, right? So then they show my video. They show the news video that I did. I'm happy about that already. And then out of nowhere, he says my name and come up with him on stage. I knew that he was gonna call my name, but the entrance to the stage was over there he thought I was coming out from the entrance of the stage somebody was supposed to come get me to go to the backstage and walk out the entrance they didn't do that <laughs> so he's looking around and then I just I just said okay I'm just gonna get up and go so I got up and started walking around the stage and then I was like okay there he is I'm like all right good so we sat down we played a piece that we literally just came up with probably a couple of minutes we came up with that piece and just played it on stage so then I was not expecting to get a standing ovation but when I got that standing ovation it really made me feel good inside because it really made me feel like I accomplished something in my life. That was one of the best, if not the biggest accomplishment I made yet so far in my life. Not even knowing how big it was at the time, now that I'm old enough to reflect back on that memory, it's like, that was actually a pretty special thing that I didn't really know what was so special at the time. Cause like when you're young, sometimes you don't understand the magnitude of things. So that's what it was more for me when I was a freshman. I didn't understand the magnitude of what I really just did. The WFMJ did another story and it was me playing at Carnegie Hall. And then I guess NBC News got word of me playing at Carnegie Hall. And then they posted it on their website. That was the first video I ever had to have one million views. It got like 1.8 million views currently today it is but at the time it was it was at 1 million views it hit 1 million views in like two weeks that was that was great that was amazing for me honestly well just to wrap this video up that was just me telling your experience of me playing at Carvey hall with the great phenomenal pianist Yerma, it's just an experience I'll never forget. That's something that people dream of doing and I was happy that I was able to accomplish one of my dreams. So, see you guys in the next video. Once again, sorry for like the failed attempt to go play the piano like in like a public place. That's kind of what we were going for, but it will happen. It will happen. I'm not sure yet when, but it surely will happen. We just gotta have to find the right spot. I'll definitely get a video of me playing the piano for you guys very soon. If you liked this video, hit that red button right there. That red button is one of the most beautiful buttons I've seen in my life. It means subscribe. Do that for me. And also leave a like if this video gets up to 300 likes. I will be doing another video. Back to back videos. This is what we doing. If y'all want more content, that's what I'm going to bring to you because like I said in the last video, I love y'all. Every time I do a video, we're growing each and every day to learn about each other. The comments, I love comments. So drop comments. Do whatever you guys want. Follow my social medias. And like I said, once again, there is a two R's.